Hey, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Several big breaking stories tonight. Exclusive new details on what fired FBI Director James Comey will and will not say when he testifies before the Senate Intelligence Committee Thursday morning. We begin, though, with more along the lines of Evan Perez's reporting just a moment ago. Multiple reports, including from The New York Times' Maggie Haberman, that Attorney General Jeff Sessions has offered to resign. Today at the White House, Press Secretary Sean Spicer repeatedly declined to answer questions about the Attorney General. How would you describe the president's level of confidence in the attorney general, Jeff Sessions? I have not had a discussion with him about that. Okay, last time you said that, there, there was a development. I, I, I'm, just, I, you, I'm asking, I'm, I'm answering a question, which is I have not had that discussion with him. So you can't say he has confidence in his attorney general? I said I have not had a discussion with him on the question. I don't, if I haven't had a discussion with him about a subject, I tend not to speak about it. Oh, more now from Maggie Haberman, who joins us uh, on the phone. So I understand you're learning more about what's been going on behind the scenes between the president and the attorney general. Yeah, we actually, this follows up on, on the reporting that Peter Baker and I did, um, that posted last night, uh, that there have been, you know, tensions between the attorney general uh, and the president going back to when Jeff Sessions decided to recuse himself from any Russia-related probe that was going on. This was after, as you remember, he uh, did not disclose in his Senate confirmation hearings that he had had at least one meeting um, with the uh, ambassador from Russia, uh, and it became controversial. The president was blindsided by this recusal, felt very upset about it, and has continued to intermittently seed over it. At some point during the last eight weeks, I don't know exactly when it was, but at some point the attorney general told the president, according to two of my sources, and we learned about this earlier today, uh, that he, uh, you know, needed to be able to do his job, needed to have space to do his job, and if he couldn't have that, then perhaps he shouldn't be there. It was not a hard resignation. It was not, here is my letter. But it was certainly making clear to the president that he was also frustrated with where this relationship has devolved to. And it's striking, Anderson, because Jeff Sessions was, as you know, one of his earliest and, and most uh, vocal supporters, one of the people who helped put policy planks uh, beneath the Trump campaign. And so to arrive at this state is really something. You said this, uh, according to two sources, that this has happened sometime within the last eight weeks. Do we know if tensions have calmed at all since then? No. I mean, the president has been uh, continuing to be frustrated with Jeff Sessions. But for the president, to be clear, is frustrated with almost everybody on staff at the moment, um, including but not limited to White House counsel Don McGahn. Uh, but the president has uh, been venting to people, really almost anyone who will listen, that Sessions made a huge error. He's very frustrated. A couple of people have said that one of the few times they've really seen him get genuinely angry, as opposed to sort of some of the bluster that we know this president can be prone to, um, was about Jeff Sessions. Uh, he's frustrated both by the Russia recusal decision and also he's angry and feels hamstrung about the fact that the executive order that the president himself signed uh, related to uh, a ban on travel, uh, temporary ban, quote unquote, from uh, Muslim majority nations, seven of them, was uh, uh, struck down by the courts. He, this, was a, this was within the first week of the administration. It set the tone going forward. And in the president's mind, Jeff Sessions is tied to everything. And, and just lastly, your colleagues at The New York Times, Michael Schmidt and Matt Abuzo, they just broke some news uh, which is fascinating, about former FBI Director Jim Comey uh, asking Jeff Sessions not to be left alone again with the president, or that he didn't want to be left alone again with the president. It's really, uh, it, it's quite striking. I mean, essentially you have, um, you know, based on, based on the reporting, you have the FBI Director concerned about the, the position, apparently, that the president might put him in uh, based on any kind of inappropriate conversation. It recalls uh, an instant, uh, se instance several months ago where uh, the uh, U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, Preet Bharara, uh, who had been asked to stay on by the president during the transition, Preet Bharara got a phone call from the president uh, the night before a, a, a broad uh, dismissal of a number of Obama appointees uh, in, the, uh, in, in federal prosecutor's offices. And Barrara did not return the president's call other than to say that it would not be appropriate, and he alerted the superior. So I think that you are seeing, a, you know, this is the latest in a, in, in a number of instances where people have been concerned about outreach from the president and what it could mean, given all of these investigations going on. Well, two big developments. Mike Haberman, thanks very much. I want to go next to Cena and Sir Murray, who is at the White House. What are you hearing from, from, uh, from anyone there about, or any source, about the tension between President Trump and Sessions? 
Well, we know this has been a very frustrating relationship for the president ever since Jeff Sessions decided to recuse himself. Remember, this was a decision that came as a surprise to the White House. And since then, as Maggie pointed out, the president has been fuming in his conversations about the fact that Sessions recused himself, which led to a special counsel. And once you are in a special counsel, there is no way to unring that bell, as one source told me today. That could delve into a number of different matters related to the president, related to his campaign and related to the people around him. And I think that we've already seen the way this investigation has touched members of his inner circle. It's touched Jared Kushner, the president's own son-in-law. And we saw uh, when the president appeared very briefly in front of the cameras today, he couldn't even get beyond that. He was saying Jared Kushner now is even more famous than I am, and I'm a little bit upset about that. But that, of course, is because of this Russia probe. And so there are moments, I think, when we get further into the Russia investigation, when we get closer to James Comey testifying on Capitol Hill, where the president tends to get more spun up. He tends to get angrier about the fact that he is now in this position because, as he feels, one of his closest allies decided to recuse himself from this investigation. So these tensions certainly are not going away, Anderson. You know, when he said to Jared Kushner, uh, he's more famous than I am now, didn't he also say that to, uh, to Director Comey at some point? Or, uh, he's used that line before. <laughs> And he it's did never also a good development. say that. It's not a good development. If you are somewhere between uh, President Trump and sort of the media limelight, he likes to be the most important person in that limelight. We saw him get angry with Steve Bannon when Steve Bannon appeared on the cover of Time magazine. Maybe, yeah. We saw him mention to Comey that, you know, this is a guy who's even more famous than I am. So certainly that's not necessarily the position you want to be in if you're Jared Kushner. Obviously, it's his son-in-law. Most people in the White House feel like his position is relatively safe, but that's not necessarily a compliment when you hear it from this president. Uh, Sir Murray, thanks very much. I want to bring in the panel, all more famous than I am. Ryan Liz is here, Molly Ball, Matt Lewis, Gloria Borger, Ken Cuccinelli, and Steve uh, Vladek. Uh, Ryan, I mean, fascinating developments. The idea that yeah. the director of the FBI doesn't want to be in, in the room alone with the president of the United States, and that Jeff Sessions, who has such, been such a longtime early supporter yeah. of, of President Trump. You know, two people, Comey and Sessions, despite Sessions' loyalty to the president and a lot of criticism about uh, his testimony where he didn't disclose certain things he should have about his contacts with the Russians, he is a little bit more of an institutionalist. I mean, he was on the Judiciary Committee for years. He was someone who hammered Obama Justice Department officials about the separation between the White House and the Justice yeah, Department. Yeah, how solid so is the notion he, that he Sessions the, offered his resignation? He, Sorry, I'm he knows, so he knows, that, he, he knows these rules, right, in a way, and obviously Comey, who uh, is, has a very, um, you know, strict wall that he, he believes should be placed between the White House and the FBI, especially when the FBI is investigating something that involves the White House, you understand where they're coming from. Stay away from the president. Sessions saying, if I, you don't let me do my job, I need to resign. And you have Trump, who just knows none of these rules and doesn't understand that even though these people technically work for him, there is this tradition of separation, and it appears that he sort of violated that norm again and again. And Molly, uh, you have Trump's heister today saying that he can't, he said he hasn't asked, when asked if the president has confidence in Jeff Sessions, I mean, most answers would normally be, you know, the president has confidence in his attorney general. Uh, Sean Spicer said, well, I haven't had the chance to ask him that. It seemed like a very telling uh, omission. And I think, you know, as, as Ryan was saying, you know, Trump views these all as people who work for him, not people who work for the country. And Jeff Sessions views himself as someone who works for the United States and for the Constitution. And so for him to be put in this position where he's being told by the president, you have to be loyal to me, that's a difficult position for him. And we're seeing, I think, an increasingly uh, enraged president who uh, wants all of these people to be loyal to him personally and to put that above everything else. And so, you know, none of us know what James Comey is going to say on Thursday, but these are all of the questions that are going to come up about whether the president is demanding loyalty to him above fealty to the law. Matt, what, what does it tell you about things at the White House? Well, look, I, I mean, I, I think everyone here is right. It's about loyalty to Donald Trump, and you're not allowed to be independent. And James Comey, I think, cares very deeply about an independent FBI. But I think that this even speaks to uh, Sean Spicer. The, any other press secretary would have said, of course, the president has full confidence in the attorney general. Even if they were lying, they would have said that because they would have assumed that um, I would have heard about it if it wasn't true. Uh, or 
that um, that they would have the loyalty of the president, right? But 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 I think what Sean Spicer realizes is that the president might take that as a slight that that he was off the reservation, that he was too far out of over his keys. How dare you say that 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 I have full confidence in the attorney general and might even tweet about it, mm. you know, to contradict him. Right. I mean, so, Gloria, if Sean Spicer had faced any other version of that question today, if someone had asked him if the president has confidence in the vice president or secretary of state, hard to imagine Sean Spicer saying, well, I haven't specifically asked him about that. Right. So we knew something was up, or Sean would have said, of course, the president has full confidence in, in, uh, in Jeff Sessions. And he didn't say that. So, you know, people began raising eyebrows and saying, wait a minute, what, what is going on here? And I just want to bring this back to a, a, this question of loyalty that, that you were talking about earlier. I talked with a source uh, recently who's known the president for 20 years, at least. And this source said to me, you know, everybody says Donald Trump is a really loyal guy. But I will tell you this, he is not. He will fire somebody. He will cut someone off if he believes that they are not loyal to him and that it's a one-way street. And so the president has been bad-mouthing Jeff Sessions to anyone who will listen, and he's bad-mouthing his, his counsel, his in-house counsel, uh, Don McGahn. He's bad-mouthing people on his staff, all of whom, quite honestly, have been quite loyal to this president, uh, including Sean Spicer, I would, I would say, and, and to his own detriment. And uh, yet, the president uh, doesn't have any compunction to restrain himself when criticizing all these other people quite openly yeah. to people he speaks with. Ken, I mean, how do you read, you know, the New York Times reporting based on Mac Haberman, based on two sources, that, that the, the attorney general offered to, uh, you know, basically said, well, I need to be able to do my job and I, I you know, I can resign. Um, how do you read that? Well, for starters, it's important for people to remember that. Uh, I've heard a lot of talk about loyalty here. That's very appropriate, I think, for all the other cabinet positions. But the attorney general is unique in the cabinet in having an independent role in enforcing the law. And that may at times be undertake, involve undertakings the president doesn't appreciate. And it may involve protecting investigations from outside influence or even knowledge that the president may not appreciate. That is part of the unique role of the attorney general. The, the first obligation is to the Constitution and to the law, not to the president. And that's not as clearly the case. Of course, they all are obligated to obey the law. But for all the other cabinet members, they're implementers of the president's agenda. And that is not necessarily the case with an attorney general. So if Jeff, Jeff Sessions believes that that element of independence that is necessary for an attorney general uh, who believes in the rule of law and the primacy of the Constitution uh, to be able to do their job correctly, it shouldn't surprise anyone that he might offer to resign. Now, it may just be you've got a president here who's never been in government before and still hasn't learned a lot of these things, frankly, and that may, that may be going on on a rolling basis even if it may not be pretty right in front of us. Steve, is it possible this is just a president's learning curve? Um, I mean, it might be, but Anderson, I think we're burying the lead a little bit, which is, you know, Jeff Sessions recused because he didn't want to have this sort of air of impropriety hanging over the Justice Department in its investigation of Russia. If President Trump is mad at Jeff Sessions for recusing, it's because he's mad that he doesn't have the ability to control the investigation into Russia. And that to me is the mm -hmm. irony here and the tie into Director Comey's testimony on Thursday. The real concern here is, has President Trump been involved in obstruction of justice? You know, let's not lose sight of the forest for the trees here. The reason why he's so upset about Jeff Sessions recusing is because he lost the ability to direct the investigation, to control things from the White House, an ability that legally he shouldn't have had in the first place. Mm. Uh, yeah. We've got to take a quick break. We're going to more of this. A quick reminder, we're going to be devoting our entire next hour to a special in-depth preview of Thursday's testimony by Jim Comey and the impact it could have. Many of the panel members will be joining us for that.